Guys, remember when you played Mario 64 for the first time? Dude, I remember playing that on Christmas. I had like 20 stars by the end of the night. Ooh, or an Ocarina of Time when you memorize the melodies. I still remember it. One was a right, A, down, right, A, down. I beat that game in just three days when I was 10. Psh, I found every heart container without a guide as a kid. You can go ahead and be jealous now. Sure. Hey, which game did you love as a kid? M me? Yeah, like what game brings you back as they say? You know, the game that you played for hours? Uh, a Mario game. Which one? The universally loved Mario World? The groundbreaking Mario 64? Or the eccentric but still beloved Sunshine? Mario Party 4? Interesting. And weird. Obviously, different people had different <clears throat> experiences. No, 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 it's fine. Mario Party's a good social game, you know? Did you play with your friends at least? Uh, do Peach, Daisy, and Mario count? Yup. That's what my brain thinks is a real scenario. Irrational? Probably. But that's how I imagine people's reactions. Nostalgia. A sentimental longing or was <laughs> this joke is overdone. You know what nostalgia is. Hopefully. So, on YouTube, I always hear channels reminiscing on games from their childhood, recalling how they defeated that difficult boss when they were eight, or playing with their siblings all the time. Very standard memories. Even I played popular games as a kid, just like them. The difference in weirdness, though, is how I played these games. I know you're thinking, how can playing a game be seen as weird? You just play it. You'd be surprised in how weird I was when I played. Alternatively, you could be thinking, ooh, did you hack the game? Did you speedrun it? Were you a child prodigy with said game? And that is giving me too much credit. In short, some of my fondest memories weren't actually playing games, but my enthusiastic behavior. Don't worry, I learned how to actually function in games, eventually. Now, I have to be honest. In order for me to immerse you into my nostalgic world, recording gameplay is pretty much necessary. Problem is, my memories rely heavily on Nintendo games, and we know all too well that my little Wii does not come with a free screen recorder. Literally every other platform has a hassle-free way of recording gameplay. Of course my memories require expensive and convoluted ways to even have quality footage. There's only so much I can do with pictures or someone else's gameplay if I want to accurately recreate my own memories. So I sincerely apologize if my less than stellar footage drags down the quality of this video. How about we pretend that using a screen to record another screen depicts how I saw these games as a kid? Cause there's no way that this is all you saw. You all saw a TV border and possibly a wall behind it. Yeah, let's use that excuse. Cool? Cool. Onward with unprofessional footage! Let's start in chronological order. The earliest games I played weren't actually mine, they were my cousin's, who was a teenager at the time. When he came over to my house, he brought with him my future obsession. I can't pinpoint the very first game I played, but he brought in a slew of games for me to try. Apparently, Melee and Mario Party 4 caught my attention. I guess the colorful characters and visuals intrigued me. My cousin was nice enough to leave those consoles at our house for a bit. One memory from Melee that I'll never forget is not actually playing the game, but being absolutely terrified of this thing. I may have feared for my life for 5 seconds. To be fair, I was probably around 7, playing in front of a CRT with that eerie white noise in my creepy basement, alone. So I hope you can understand why I was a bit traumatized. I know the purpose is to show that, hey, someone's coming. But in my head, it meant, hey, something is very wrong, because that's what emergency alarms are used for. I couldn't have been the only one, right? Moving on to my beloved Mario Party 4. I'm gonna go ahead and say that this is my favorite video game of all time for completely baseless reasons. Mario Party 4 is far from the best game ever, but it's special to me, okay? This is the first time playing the game for once. Yay me. I remember playing with my cousins and loving every single minigame, which were essentially... Eventually, my cousin let someone else borrow his GameCube along with those games, and I never heard from that GameCube ever again. Which really bummed me out because I genuinely enjoyed playing those games, but obviously they weren't mine. I couldn't just steal them from my own, but I did steal the manual, by accident. This is all I have from my cousin's game. As you can see, I required another copy of my favorite game, but not until years later. Same for Melee. This is where the slight weirdness begins. This one minigame. It's called Fruit of Doom. For some inexplicable reason, I obsessed over this one, but I wouldn't be able to play it until three years after I got the game. Why, you may ask? Let's break it down. 
When you start up the game completely new, you have zero minigames available. You can only unlock them by playing party mode, which can be done fairly quick. However, Fruits of Doom is one of three Bowser minigames, and the only way to access them is landing on a Bowser space. Very fitting. That's if you get to play a minigame. Most. And I'm stressing most of the time. This thing will swoop in. Even if you get to play a minigame, you get a 33.3333% chance to play Fruits of Doom. So you can imagine how long that took. It was like I found gold in a rigged RNG party game. Moving on to a very popular franchise, Pokemon. I don't like pronouncing it Pokemon, but what can you do? My earliest memory of Pokemon Ruby wasn't actually battling or even catching Pokemon for that matter. In fact, I was playing on my sister's save files, so I didn't even get a chance to fully understand what was even going on. Apparently, this is what I did. My sister last saved in Lily Cove City, presumably in front of the department store. So what I did was go up to the rooftop, talk to an NPC, not by pressing A, but literally talking out loud, throwing some weird insult at them like you smell or something. Then I proceeded to book it all the way back downstairs and out the exit by quote unquote running. But you couldn't run indoors so it was really just walking all the way back. But I really imagined running away from this NPC so they wouldn't catch up to me I guess. I was breathing heavily as I escaped. So dramatic. And I did this over and over for no reason. Also, I didn't know how to save, so I'd end up in front of the department store again. So maybe I thought I had to do the same sequence of events again? I don't know. I was dumb. Mario Party DS. Can you tell, like Nintendo? These memories are a bit more normal, but don't get your hopes up. A lot of good memories came from this often overlooked Mario Party game. This was the go-to game to play with my sister whenever we had long road trips because DS download play it less enjoy the full game. You know who you are. My sister and I tried to play this game with this other kid, but when he was losing, he just turned off his DS, ending our game. Kids are fun, but this is where my weirdness comes into play. There is this minigame called Trace Cadets. No, it's not a Bowser minigame. It's just a regular minigame, thankfully. I took this one way too seriously. Once I knew how to play, I committed to be an expert in this one minigame. No real motive. I just really loved it. Whenever that minigame wheel landed on Trace Cadets, I was way more excited than I should have been. I remember challenging this one person from high school, not in Smash, not in Mario Kart, but in Mario Party out of all things, just to play Trace Cadets. I'm not even kidding. Only I would do that. Spoiler alert, I crushed them. Easily. They weren't even mad, they were just confused. Mario Kart Wii! I played so much of this game. I unlocked all the characters. Fun fact, when I searched up on YouTube on how to unlock Rosalina, I had no idea what Super Mario Galaxy was. All the vehicles and cups were unlocked, obviously. It's something that I cannot believe I did as a kid. I landed in first place with at least one star on every cup on every speed class, twice. I don't know how I did it as a kid. There's absolutely no way I would do it now. And you know this one is infamous for constant blue shells. Where's my shells? So I experienced a lot of- Either I had nothing better to do, or I had way too much patience for a child. Before I get into the story, there was this period of time I would like to call the do they have a Wii phase. Whenever I was forced to go to my dad's friend's house party, I would always ask my dad, do they have a Wii? Because when you're 10 to 12, you don't know anyone there. So what better excuse to not socialize than to do the same thing you do at home? Play Wii. I mean, those 48.64 million Wiis have to be somewhere in the US, right? And luckily, most of the time they did have a Wii which is all I needed at the party. My family was invited to a friend's wedding and surprisingly, my dad bribed me into coming by him saying that they had a Wii. At a wedding? Yup, at a wedding. The TV was tucked into this corner and no one was even playing it so that means more time for me and for my cousin that was with me. They had Super Mario Galaxy and, you guessed it, Mario Kart Wii. Obviously, I picked Mario Kart Wii and spent way too long in that corner, completely ignoring the actual event. <laughs> I used to memorize the sounds that each character would make, with this forever being engraved in my head. I played online for the first time, with one hacker experience that utterly shocked me. Yeah, Mario Kart Wii holds an extremely special place in my heart. Sorry, Double Dash. On to Super Smash Bros. Brawl. 
where this was the first Smash I owned, and what a surprise, I synced hours into this game as well. I remember being unhealthily invested into Subspace Emissary by replaying the same levels, memorizing the cutscenes, and feasting my eyes upon the wonderfully generic world map. You might be saying, hey, it's not that bad. Subspace is a decent mode to sink time into. Well, that's because it isn't my weirdest story. This one takes the cake for being so strange and a little sad looking back at it. So I usually played video games by myself. No online friends to play with when I was 10. So what I did was set up a team battle where I was part of the red team, consisting of three members against one member of the blue team. I chose Zelda to play as and chose Peach and Kirby as my teammates, both level 9. Mario was chosen to be the opponent and I put him at level 1. Yes, this happened, unfortunately. I specifically chose Rainbow Cruise and then I proceeded to roleplay as the damsel in distress. <laughs> However, there's a twist. You know the part where the ship crashes and starts to sink? Everyone else would leave the ship, so that's when I transformed into Sheik and acted like a whole new person, and fought like a highly skilled warrior, beating up poor Mario. And when the stage quickly fell back down to the ship, I transformed back into Zelda and pretended like nothing happened. Apparently I imagined it so Peach, Kirby, and Mario thought that Zelda and Sheik were two different people, so it was like this covert operation to switch between these two characters. I even acted these scenes out loud such as Zelda being like, Go without me, I'll be okay! Or when Peach would be like, Oh Sheik, there you are! You came in just in time to deal with the enemy. I couldn't even choose Ganondorf as the enemy. I chose Mario out of all characters, like why? This wasn't even a one-off occasion. I did this on multiple days, for no reason. Instead of improving my smash skills, I was a one-man act with no audience. You could say I was imaginative, or simply just weird, but like really? Why did I choose Mario? It remains a mystery. So those are my fondest memories. Obviously I have many more, but this script is already four pages long, so I'm going to stop here. One thing to take away from this video is that even if your memories are different from others, it doesn't make them any less special. Be proud of your memories. Mine aren't that crazy, but I would never trade them for anything, if that's even possible. If you want, share some of your gaming memories. They can't be as strange as mine, right? You don't have to. It's completely up to you. Leave a comment. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I hope you enjoyed this unnecessarily long video. Um, bye.